Hey, this is Tux from Poppy Shiitake and you are listening to Five Notes with Wendell Correa. Fala, galera, beleza? Eu sou o Wendel Correa e hoje tem entrevista exclusiva para o Cinco Notas. Vou conversar com o Alex, o Young Tux, da banda Papi Chitak, uma banda nova lá de Brooklyn, em Nova York. Lançaram um EP de estreia durante a quarentena, inclusive chama Quarantine Dream. Estão trabalhando um novo álbum. A gente vai falar sobre isso e, claro, sobre música aqui no Cinco Notas. Vamos lá. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Lando? I'm fine, and you, man? How are you? Doing pretty good. So, how are you, man? On doing this crazy... pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing pretty good right now. I'm. Uh, I've just been working on the new album. Yeah, we're putting one out this summer. I've seen on on Instagram. And how is it mm-hmm. working? You are recording, composing. What is happening? Yeah, exactly. So right now, I mean, everything's been written and like pretty much like we are doing everything. So I'm like mixing um the album right now so oh. should be uh finished soon get that master and then we're gonna get going i'm pretty excited and what can you tell for us about that how many tracks yeah i think there's gonna be about 10 tracks um and we're gonna press it to vinyl this time oh. which is cool nice. um and yeah this is like the full because like the last one we just did um like the three song like three songs we have in, in and then an instrumental you know what i mean so this is like cool like to just show a larger canvas of different stuff does it already had a name it's called wabi sabi <laughs> wabi sabi you, yeah. you like food don't you yeah yeah it's exactly <laughs> so like wabi sabi is like the the um the like art of imperfection it's like a japanese thing like when something's broken you like fix it with gold and even though it's broken and it's not complete somehow it's like even better so like i've been trying to a lot of like uh kind of like let stuff be on the album you know like if it's kind of fucked up like that's cool that's wabi sabi that's nice man i want to talk the beginning about papi shitake is that how we we say right yeah you got it and how this beginning Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so um, uh, basically, I used to be in a band with this guy in San Diego, um, and he had randomly just sent me a track, which was like an instrumental, and I thought that he um, had like started a new band, and I didn't even I didn't even ask him. I just like got the song, was like, this is so awesome. I'm gonna put vocals over it, and I put vocals over and sent it back to him. I didn't even like respond to it. I just sent him back a track and uh, I thought it was with the band and he did everything himself. And I was like, oh, my God, this is so cool. Like this. I love this vibe that he has going on. So I was like, let's write some more. And then we started writing a bunch of songs. And then, uh, you know, the trash casual thing happened. And uh, then we put out Quarantine Dream. So uh, every song you release on Quarantine Dream EP, it was made on Quarantine. Yeah, so um like there is like one song um that was before Smile was written before um quarantine but like maybe like a month or two. So, you know, it was still all in it was kind of like going from right before quarantine into quarantine, you know. And why the name Papi Shitake? Um Papi Shitake, I mean, I I love it. It's um It's fun to say, you know, like I had a ex who like whose dad was a mushroom farmer and I, I was uh, in Colombia and um, I was like, it's Papi Shitake. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit, that's awesome. I love that. So I was like, all right, let's call this. I had just like gone down there and uh, came back. I was like, oh, we should call it this. This is so fun. So you have been in South America. Have you been in Brazil? Mm-hmm. I have not yet, but I want to. I want yeah. to. Um, we're actually working right now with um, a street artist named Pope Millionaire, and he's doing the logo for Wabi Sabi for the album. What else do you know about Brazil? Well, I'm actually like been listening to like a lot of Brazilian jazz and bossa nova. So for the next album after Wabi Sabi, like I really want to get into that sound and do some sort of like indie pop like kind of variation on it because I'm just like kind of obsessed with it. I love it. And talking about music, when did you decide to be a musician? What was your main influences for that? Oh, man. You know, I started playing, like, I, it was like me and a bunch of friends, and we decided to be in a band before we even had instruments. 
And we're like, okay, <laughs> we're going to be in a band. And like, I was listening to like Blink-182 and like pop punk and all this stuff like that. I'm like originally started on bass and then like nobody wanted to sing and play guitar. So I was like, I'll do it. And then I have like, I was 15. And so like, it's just been this quest ever since, you know, it's crazy. What, which instrument did you learn to play? Guitar was my primary instrument first. And I've been playing guitar for a long time. And this is the first project where I've just kind of, um, I'm just singing, you know, it's kind of freeing. And you are young, don't you? How old are you now? I'm actually 35. So, yeah, but it's, you know, yeah, I saw your post, uh, people get being so sex, success after 30. Oh, yeah, I've just yeah, your yeah. post. <laughs> That's really nice, man. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, it is. It's, you know, life happens at you in different ways. And like, you know, I had this kind of like uh, moment of truth before Poppy Shiitake was created um, and had started. And it was kind of like while it was going on and I found this kind of sort of um, honesty that I was never able to find. I was al allowing myself to be vulnerable. And I think in the, the quarantine dream, especially like, you know, when you're writing a lyric and you're like, Ooh, I don't know if I really want to say this to people. Like maybe I'll make it cooler. I'm like, Nope, that's what's going in there. So like it, it took, it took X amount of time to get to this point where I was like, okay, this is my voice. This is who I am. I'm not, I'm not afraid to show it. And that's why uh, one reason you created the Alter Ego, Young Flux? Young Tux, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Young Tux, like, I was doing, like, some hip-hop stuff before, um, Poppy Shiitake, and, like, young, I had done, uh, this sounds kind of crazy, but I had just done this ice bath with Wim Hof, who he teaches this, like, breathing technique um, to allow you to withstand cold temperatures. And so I went to this huge seminar and we, I was, I like hate being wet and cold so much. And like, we got in these pools that were like filled with ice and you sit in it for like three minutes and like, it's so cold. You're, it feels like fire everywhere. And like, when I got out of that pool, like I had so much adrenaline pumping and I was just like, it was like the warriors cry and they're like, ah, <laughs> and that's when Young Tux was born. And, you know, I was like, oh, like, you know, my heart is a diamond formed under pressure, unbreakable. And that's kind of like the Tux Creed. Um, so then that kind of, I was like, what we started doing, Poppy's talking, like, oh man, like, I love being Young Tux. Like, I, what what if Young Tux was the singer of Poppy Shiitake? You know, <laughs> I'm like, this is cool. This is what I want to be. <laughs> that's nice, man. And I want to talk to you with you about the songs. I want to start with Enjoy the View. It's my favorite favorite one. And oh, because, awesome. Thank you. Because I connected uh, when you say, <laughs> I just want to do nothing. Just wait, waste my time today. <laughs> yeah, <And> that, exactly. <laughs> that is the you meaning of me. the song, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that like a lot of times people like don't give enough like weight to just chilling and doing nothing. You know, there's a lot of joy to be felt there. And mm -hmm. like, it's a good, it's good to like, not always be busy because like i live in brooklyn and like the whole thing like before pandemic mostly but like there's just this hustle and bustle here with go 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 never stop never stop i'm like ah, chill out please i just want to hang out and watch tv today <laughs> this, the same thing happened here in sao paulo i'm from sao paulo brazil okay I've never been in new york but I've, i think it's the same thing people always work and always stress yeah. And I think sometimes it's cool. I always have something to do, but sometimes I say, oh, I won't do nothing today. <laughs> Today's the day. You remind me the song of Bruno Mars, the lazy song. Oh, I, I don't know if I heard that one, actually. <laughs> I should, uh, should check it out. <laughs> yeah. It's the same one he, he talks things about. Today I feel like doing nothing all day. It's the yeah. same. <laughs> no, it's fun. <laughs> And before I enter, talk to you about the videos because the videos is also nice as well. I want to talk with the songs and smile. What means the song smiles? Well, I smiled like I had really, I was like, had this day that where I was just so down and I had like just gone to my therapist um, to see her and I came back and I didn't feel any better. And I was thinking about this whole honesty thing. And so I try to go like flow of like consciousness, you know, just free thought um, when I'm singing and writing lyrics. And that all just kind of like came out. Like it was like really like that feeling like I 
I feel like garbage left in the sun, you know, like that was just my feeling. And so it's really about like in the face of all that, like finding um, like positivity and optimism, you know, to smile in the, in the face of that. Like I try to keep like it's always these two worlds kind of at odds with each other, like, you know, this pessimism and optimism that are always kind of circling in this dance. And so this is just kind of one moment in that dance, I think. That's nice you're talking and singing about that because it's that's okay if you don't feel okay one day, né? Exactly. It's really exactly. nice. Exactly. Because some Thanks. people now say, oh, you have to be good, you have to work, you have to keep be happy all day. Yeah. Like, that's not going to happen ever. <laughs> no, yeah, you just build up pressure and explode in some other area in your life, you know? You got to feel it when it comes. Yeah. And do, do you use a lot of social media? Yeah, you know, I've been, I have like a weird like relationship with social media where like part of me like doesn't want to be on social media at all, you know? Yeah. And then the other part realizes like this is just kind of like the way it is right now. And that is how people connect. So I've been trying to, you know, and I, I love watching, um, you know, when I am on uh, social media, like people who are like so candid, you know, and they're just kind of doing stuff. I love like sneak peeking that. So, I'm trying to do that as well, you know. Yeah. But it is a a push and pull with that. Yeah, because everyone is successful, successful on social media, and then you meet the person. Okay. Yeah, they're not so so good. Yeah. Like this. Exactly. I know. That's the thing as well. Like, because I feel like a lot of bands can like they'll like play a show and like look really cool on stage. Like the photos look awesome. And then like you hear the band, you're like, holy shit, <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah. And the song Quarantine Dream, I believe you you did it on quarantine, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that was like, I really wanted to take a moment and like kind of like, I felt like as an artist and a songwriter, like a snapshot of what was going on in my world in that moment you know, and the feelings that were associated with it. So that was like definitely a, a quick song, you know, that I did, um, you know, in the same, in meaning that like it came together really quickly, which is nice. And how did you have the idea to make the cover and version or your version of Sleepy Walk? Yeah, so originally like that song was, um, I, I think that Ryan had, done like a tone experiment and he used that and I was like oh this sounds so good I would love to do our take of sleepwalk and so we put um uh we put new lyrics over it like all you know this this whole song and like made this this song with these new sort of interpretation of sleepwalk and we had to go get like everybody to sign off on it and like Santo and Johnny wrote that and Johnny he said no So we couldn't put out the actual song with the lyrics and the vocals. So we just put out the instrumental. So maybe it's like, I feel like I want to do it a lot. I can play it at live shows. So I feel like live shows, I'm going to be playing that with vocals. But yeah, it was just kind of like the sleepwalk. Um, the name of the song was originally called 12 Hours. And it was about how that like, you know, in quarantine, I was experiencing the same 12 hours like over and over again. And it's just kind of just like Groundhog's Day repetition. Like we did a, a video for it um, while I was in quarantine, like in the apartment and everything, but I couldn't use it, so. And talking about your videos, it's really nice videos for our audio song you did, man. Congratulations for that. Oh, thank you. Really nice to watch. And I want to talk to you about Enjoy the View. You have a Muppet. You yeah. Little Tux, right? <laughs> the name. Exactly, Little Tux. <laughs> And that's my boy. How? Who has the idea? Who directed the video? How was shooting this video? Um. Yeah. So. Um. Like I came up. I just had always wanted to do a Muppet video. Like I. Like I like grew up watching Sesame Street. I love the Muppets. <laughs> I love like Yoda. <laughs> like this is definitely my jam. So I'm like, okay, how do I make this happen? Like in the song, like in the I just like imagined us like running together and just like having the best day ever. So I found this kind of like stoner looking Muppet on eBay and like we kind of like fixed him up and then I found a uh, puppeteer, Will Callahan. Um, and then I kind of put all these pieces together and then Bill Dvorak directed the video. 
or we co-directed together and um yeah it was just it was kind of awesome like it, we filled that all in a day you know it was pretty it was pretty cool um and off the cuff like like the guy who's in the um when we like deliver the takeout and we eat it like that's my buddy dylan and like we called him that day we're like yo can you come over and like look like this guy and he's like got you <laughs> so it's real off the cuff that's and, and the quarantine dream video is animated cartoon yeah exactly yeah. and i've always want i mean i love part of like poppy shiitake is kind of like building this world of just like things that i love and so i've always wanted to do an animated video i love cartoons i love anime um and so yeah we contacted um this artist or got in touch with this artist um pedal um and they um did this video um and we i'm like i try to with artists like i love working with other artists getting their kind of take on everything because i used to do everything myself and do the graphics and it's just like one lens you know you don't get to see it through other people's eyes and so i try to let the artists kind of just take the lead i'm like it's a little bit like this it's a little bit like that do what do you think you know and so most yeah i mean most of that was just all pedal you know um it's an idea i love it yeah, this really nice since I, uh, other animated is the lyric video for smile uh, mm -hmm. yeah i love uh yeah i love anime so that's uh this anime garden of words and then um we had someone like you know cut it up and then i got someone to do subtitles and then subtitles in japanese just to give it a vibe you know it's japanese i was in that um, because i don't understand mm -hmm. it in english, yeah totally in japanese <laughs> yeah so it was english and japanese and then i think it's really cool like that we got a lot of people when they saw that were like they were able to get into the lyrics more and they're like oh okay i'm like Okay, that's it's the a lyric videos, it can be powerful. Yeah. And do you intend to tour after this pandemic ends? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's kind of weird because Poppy Shiitake like only came out after pandemic. So we like I did play some shows um during the summer, like outdoor shows, um, like a couple, and it was just me over like music. Um but we besides that we haven't been able to play there's no never been like a full band you know in the venue kind of thing going on so i'm i cannot wait i cannot wait and do you think you have a full band a guitar a bass yeah yeah for sure i want to kind of have like a bigger band you know i need some backing backing singers you know and like the whole the whole thing because it's a big sound you know um and i just kind of want to do justice that's nice man and talking about the, the new album again, uh, talking about music, uh, do you have a favorite one yet? What the, uh, means the, the songs on this new album? Uh, is there like a feeling associated with the album? That's yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's really just Wabi Sabi, like embracing your own imperfection, you know, and kind of realizing how perfect that is and how different things in your life you know, they seem messed up or something and they're actually like kind of beautiful. And like, just looking at those moments. Do, do you are doing everything on your house in San, Di for in San Diego? Is everything? Well, yeah, so like, yeah, my buddy Ryan does the instrumentals in San Diego and then sends them over to me. I cut them up and, and make songs out of them and then produce them, mix them, and then we send them off to get mastered. But yeah, it's pretty much, it's awesome because I have like a little um, studio here in Brooklyn, like in my apartment. Um, so it's it's nice to be able to create whenever you want without limits, you know, but you got you to gotta set some deadlines. <laughs> and when you are releasing it? You already know? Um, it, will be in the, it will be in the summer. I don't know the exact date, but it's definitely going to be the summer. Yeah, that's nice, man. So yeah. probably before the pandemic ends. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. But it's cool because you have a uh, really large set list to play on when, when you go on tour. Yeah, that's totally true. I know we've got, um, you know, we actually have like a lot of material, so it's 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 nice to change it up. Talking about your influences, what do you most listen to? Your, you do have a favorite band? Um, You know, like it sounds cliche, but I'm like mostly in, like I'm 
heavily influenced by like Beatles, Beach Boys, The Kinks and things like that, like real 60s stuff. But I love hip hop music as well. Um, and I really love anything that grooves. Um, but right now, honestly, like I've really just been listening to so much of um, like Bossa Nova and Brazilian jazz. Like I'm in this mode where like it just feels so it feels so good. It grooves so hard. It's got so much emotion um, and it's just a depth to it in the sound that is unlike anything else. I, I absolutely love it. And do you have a singer that you, you inspires you most to say, oh, I want to sing it like him or like her? Not really. I try to like stay away from that, you know, and like really like stay in my own voice. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I do love Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, God, how do you do it like <laughs> Frank? He's so good. Like, I don't understand it. Uh, maybe him, but I don't know. And you were born in Brooklyn? No, I was actually born in Virginia. I'm like from a really small town in Virginia, like more cows than people. And the childhood was all there? Yeah, I was there and I was there in Virginia and I grew up um, there. It was, you know, it was kind of intense. And then I moved out to California, came back, was in like DC for a while, moved down to Richmond, Virginia, and then moved up to New York about, um, it's going to be 10 years this year. So it's, it's your favorite place so far? New York City, for sure. <laughs> I love it here. There's just, it's like, it's, I don't know, it's its own bubble. It's like its own world. And like, as soon as you get in, you feel it and you're like, whoa. And then when you leave, you're like, oh, whoa. <laughs> you know, and it's just, I, it's, I don't know if I could live anywhere else, like in the US, you know. So I believe I you. Here. You enjoy Sao Paulo when you came here. When you came here, please let me know so I can show oh, you. Oh, absolutely. I would <laughs> love to. I would love to. We got yeah, I mean, we got to figure out a way to make that. It's it would be amazing. And how is the uh, New York City musical scene nowadays? Um, the music scene, I don't know. There's it's kind of interesting because there's just so many pockets all in the music scene. So like you can get in a pocket and it feels like its own world. And then you can go to this other pocket and it's like, oh, there's this, all this other going on. I mean, it is, it's, it's kind of like hard to say because things have changed so much now, um, you know, since the pandemic, like people are like rethinking things, which is awesome. But I mean, it is, there's still, we're still out here, you know, it's not, I don't think there's this zeitgeist of like Brooklyn music like there was for a time. But um, it's good. You know, there's a lot of community here too. Yeah, I agree with you. I think with computer, everything's changing on the music scene. Not on the city, but it's a world music now. Yeah, exactly. It's like, um, you know, you, it, you just interact with music in a totally different way, you know? But I think that once shows come back, that it's gonna be amazing. Like, I think people are gonna really, like once you get back in the crowd and you hear the band, everybody's like, this is what I've been missing. This is it, you know? Yeah. It's, it's gonna be cool. I really miss it, man. I, I used to go to concerts every weekend. Every weekend I was on yeah. a show, knowing uh, only stage, on every every yeah. show that I have, I, I was there and then yeah. when I step away, oh my God, what happened? Crazy. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's 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 amazing. And tell more about Tok Tok. You have a vegan Korean barbecue, right? Oh yeah, Toki Toki. Yeah. So I have like a um, vegan Korean barbecue pop up that I do. Um, and so th before pandemic, I was doing a lot of like vegan markets and stuff. But um, you know, I just not really had too much um, vegan Korean barbecue, and I. I like to cook. I used to do sushi. Um, and I made a recipe that was really awesome for this bulgogi. And then so I was like, all right, let's take this to the people. Um, and it's fun. I don't do it as much anymore right now because I'm just so focused on music. Um, but uh, yeah, I love it. We, we ha There's a bar here in, um, in Brooklyn called Tradesman that we had to pop out like throughout the pandemic. No, no, that's nice. I have some quick questions that will, will make you think a little bit. Do you mind if I do it? I love it. <laughs> it's all about music. Okay. So, uh, the first music you remember hearing? 
Ooh, that's a good question. I think the first song I remember hearing is Love Shack. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I saw the video for Love Shack. It was like on someone had it on TV and I like the colors and everything. I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is kind of amazing and crazy." Um, yeah, so that that was the one. <laughs> Says a lot about what's going on, I guess. <laughs> And the greatest album of all time, in your opinion? Ooh, that's a hard one. Uh, the greatest album of all time. Um, I off the cuff, like my immediate answer is like I love Kanye West. I love Jesus. I think that album is crazy. I didn't really like Kanye West. Um, and my, I like, I liked him, but I wasn't like, it was like whatever. And my ex girlfriend for her birthday, I got us tickets to go see him on his on the Yeezus tour. And I listened to it a little bit before. Was like, okay, whatever. When I saw it live, it changed everything for me. I was like, oh my gosh, this album is incredible. When you saw like the vision of what he was doing and like this whole, like there's this creature on the mountain that comes down and like it's intense. So I kind of love that one. <laughs> and do do you listen to vinyls and CDs or just streaming now? You know, I just listen to streaming right now, honestly. Like, never been like a huge vinyl guy, to be honest with you. Like, it's just not in my nature, I guess. You know, um, and I've always kind of I love new technology, so like, I've been just so used to that. And like CDs, I don't I don't even have anything to play it on, really, unfortunately. <laughs> and who is your favorite songwriter? Um, I think that my favorite songwriter is John Lennon. Uh, that's the... Yeah, it's a it's a cliche one, but I I just like I actually just started. I ha like I'm such a Beatles fanatic, and I don't know this is embarrassing to say, but I haven't heard this before. But I just started listening to the Beatles in mono, like the way that they mix them, and it sounds so good. Like it's so next level i was like i mean like some of the songs sound like hip hip hop tracks like the way they groove and with the bass like the way paul mccartney like i, yeah. <laughs> I say who who doesn't like beatles you have to be suspicious about that person i know well you well if someone says they don't like the beatles you already know a lot about them <laughs> you yeah. know what i mean you know a lot about them you're like oh okay <laughs> You're one of these people. <laughs> totally agree with you, man. Uh, <laughs> the most underrated band of all time in your opinion? The most underrated band of all time. Um, I think. No, you can't say that... Beatles. No, it's not the Beatles. <laughs> I mean, I think it's actually my my second favorite is the Kinks because I I think that like the Kinks like their whole they. I feel like in some ways they had these moments that where they should have been bigger, but they had been banned from the U.S. And so they started doing all these like sort of like English focused albums, like conceptual albums. And like, I love those like Village Green Preservation Society and um, Arthur, like those albums are awesome, but they didn't really get over here because they couldn't tour and they were stuck over there. So I think if they had been able to come over here they would have been a bigger band because then i mean there are a lot of like kinks records that i'm like no i don't i don't want to listen to that but their good stuff is so awesome to me that's nice you're saying that man because here in brazil there are some bands that are huge huger here in brazil yeah bigger than us like ramones really yeah. enjoy ramones yeah here. and there are some yeah. bands that you guys really love in us but don't happen yeah. so much here in brazil and the kinks i have the impression that only happen in the us and don't happen here in yeah. brazil so it's yeah, funny yeah. saying that. Yeah, I mean, I, I they it was just kind of like I, those bands were like I were so influential to my songwriting, you know, when I was younger. So I they're the, like they're like core pieces in my musical identity. So I resonate with them. Yeah, because on the radio we only listen to "You Really Got Me Here" from Kings. Got it. Yeah, I mean, you got to listen only one. to. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah exactly and that's so that's what's so crazy is that like yeah. they have all this awesome awesome material that's really cool that just like is not championed as much you know even though like now it's like super old and i get it 
<laughs> and when a new band started with guitar riff distortion, I said, oh, man, you got to listen to the Kings before you listen to the new band. Exactly. exactly. That's when, when it begins, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, he slit that uh, cut in the speaker and made the first yeah. distortion. It's crazy. So nice answer, man. Your Saturday night party song. Ooh, Saturday night party song. Um, oh my gosh, hold on. I just started listening to this new song. Um, I forget what it's called. It's by Bomba Stereo. Do you know them? Yeah. Um, Deja is the new song they have. I've been listening to that all the time. Oh, I haven't. That's my, haven't this, yeah. yeah, check out that song. Um, the, I love them. They're super cool. And then I like this came on. I was like, oh my gosh, who is this? I was like, oh, Bomba Stereo. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Man. And the last question, the song that makes you cry. The song that makes me cry. You know what song is? This isn't like the song. This is the most recent song that I didn't cry, but I did feel a little sad. And it's kind of crazy. It's Justin Bieber's Lonely. Have you heard <laughs> this song? Yeah. Like he talks about his life and I'm like, oh, damn, bro. Like, I didn't know. I didn't know you had it so bad and you're so lonely. Like, let me give you a hug. Like, yo, he killed that. Like, he made me have a feeling. Yeah, man. Justin Bieber is developing his, good his stuff, man. That new yeah. album is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, not a only baby anymore. It, they have exactly. other songs. Exactly. Yeah. Do you intend to do covers when you go on tour, man? Yeah. Um. Actually, we're working on uh, a cover of Chan Chan right now by Buena Vista Social Club. Um, so I love covers. I mean, I love going to see a band and then they're killing it. And then they play this other cover that you love or didn't know or whatever. And it's just its own world. You're like, oh my gosh, this is awesome show. So I love do doing stuff like that. Such a nice talk with you. Anything else you want to talk with, with me? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think so. I mean, I'll, I'll hit you up and let you know what's going on with these uh, new the new album. We actually have a song um, coming out soon um, in France as well um, on a French uh, record label called Nice Guy Records. So that'll be soon. Yeah, man. That really nice talk with you, man. Such yeah, a pleasure. Yeah, bless. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is so fun. Later, Wendell. Thank you. Later.